All right, guys, welcome back to Underground Science. And in this video, we'll continue naming or practicing naming alkenes, but we're going to specifically focus on trans, cis, E, and Z, okay, in, in this video and in the next few videos. And so we're going to go over stereoisomers, right? So we're going to go over stereoisomers and um, so like things like enantiomers, diastereomers, meso compounds, and all of that in future videos. In this video, the only thing we need to know about stereoisomers, right, is cis and trans. So these are types of diastereomers, cis and trans. And if I drew um, double bond here, double bond here, and then I did this, 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 and this, you can probably tell the difference between cis and trans, right? Cis is when, if the two substituents off the double bond is on the same side, but trans is when the two substituents off the double bond are on opposite sides, all right? So knowing that, we can name our future molecules. So if we go to our first example, right, so what do we do when we name any compound? Um, we start numbering the longest carbon chain, but then we immediately know, okay, here, here I see a double bond, so it's going to be an alkene. So not only are we naming the longest carbon chain, we're also looking for the longest carbon chain that has the most substituents, okay, and you, you want the double bond of the least carbon number. So if we were to start numbering this chain, Let's start from here, because if we start from here, the double bond is on carbon number two. And as of now, that's looking like the correct carbon numbering because two is the least carbon number that we can put on this double bond. Okay, so let's start numbering it from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, oops, sorry, seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So we have a 10 carbon chain and this numbering pattern seems like the numbering pattern in which not only do I have the longest carbon chain, but I also have the most substituents this way, right? Like if you were to take a detour at six and go seven, eight, that wouldn't be the longest carbon chain and that wouldn't be the most substituents. So this, this way we have a longest carbon chain, most substituents, and we put the double bond in the least carbon number two. Because if we started one from here, as you guys probably already know, right, by the time of by the time we get to this double bond, we would be on carbon number eight if we started numbering one from here. But because we started from this side, we're on the double bond at carbon two, and that's better because we want the double bond in the least carbon number. So now that we know that this is correct, let's go and name the molecule. So what substituents do we have? We have a six ethyl, right? We have a seven methyl, and then we have a double bond on this two carbon. Now, who comes alphabetically first, ethyl or methyl? E comes before M, right? So that's why we would say that first when we start naming it. So it'd be 6-ethyl-7-methyl-dash, and then what carbon number is the double bond on? 2. So 2 dash. How many carbons long is this carbon chain? 10, right? So what is that? Decane, right? If we're thinking about alkanes, it would be decane. Because it's an alkene, it would be decane. So we would say decane. Okay, again, this is correct according to IUPAC rules, but what's also correct is if we said 6-ethyl-7-methyl-dec, and then we said dash, and then we designated at what carbon number is the double bond on, 2, and then dash ene. So either way is correct. So now that we know that, right, there's one more thing we're missing. So what we said, we named everything perfectly except now let's add in what we learned in the beginning of the video, which is the differentiation between cis and trans stereoisomers. So just for now, like what did we learn um, in the beginning of this video? We look at the double bond, right? And then we see the substituents coming off of it on either side or on both sides. So right now the double bond, if we just drew this right beneath the uh, drawing itself, right now the double bond's like that with this pattern. So if you notice, there's the continuation is on opposite sides, right? So when we start, we start right here, then you have the double bond, then the continuation goes like that. So if you look at this, that would be similar to drawing it like that, right? And so what do we say that was? That was too long of a bond, sorry. What would you say this would be if we had to say cis or trans? Well, we have two groups on opposite sides of the double bond. So this would be trans right but if if this same bond if we do the same bond right over here so again if we had a double bond at this angle 
and then if we had one going down similar to this, but if instead of this continuation, the molecule continued like this, right? So that would be similar to drawing like that. Now we would have to say that this is cis, right? Now we would have to say this is cis uh, stereoisomer or the cis configuration, okay? But just knowing that this is trans, right? That's all we have to know in order to name the molecule. And in fact, that's all we have to know to finish naming the molecule. So in the previous page, we actually named it correctly, right? 6-ethyl-7-methyl-2-decene, right? Let's say we're choosing this option right here, the top one. What would we have to do in order to finish naming the molecule completely? Well, we just figured out that this was a trans configuration, right? Because see, it's on opposite sides on the double bond, on either side of the double bond. So we would just say trans in the right, all the way in the front. So it'd be trans dash six dash ethyl dash seven dash methyl dash two dash decking. All right. So this would be the full name for this molecule above according to IUPAC. So let's do another example, which is this. Okay. And let's draw the double bond right here. So again, let's start numbering the longest carbon chain and Let's make sure that that chain has the most substituents and let's make sure that the double bond falls on the least carbon number. So just by eyeing this, right, we've done this many times, which way would you start numbering this? Well, just by eyeing this and immediately telling, you could immediately tell that, okay, I'll start right here because then the third carbon will be the carbon number in which the double bond falls on, which right by looking at this, there's no other numbering pattern that looks like it would be a lower number than three. Right, so then that, that means this would be the correct numbering pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the question is, do I end at seven here or do I keep on going? Well, you're trying to find the longest carbon chain. So you wouldn't end at seven there if there's a longer option. So you have to go seven, eight, right? So eight is our longest carbon chain. And then we just name this molecule, right? So it'd be, what do we have here? What substituents? We have a six methyl and that's it, right? So once we know our substituents, let's name the actual molecule. So we only have one substituent, so you're going to start with that. 6-methyl, and then you have an oct, right? Because the prefix oct means 8, but then we have a double bond, so we have an ene, and the double bond is on the third carbon, so it would be a 3-octene group, or like that would be the end of the name. So it would be 3-octene. However, Right, just like in our previous example, we have to focus on cis versus trans here. Remember, the second you have to focus on cis versus trans, you go to the double bond. So if we look at the double bond here, we have one group pointing up right here, right on this side. But the, if you go on the other side, that's also pointing up. So it's on the same side. So that would be cis. So all you would do to name it or to finish naming the molecule is in the beginning of the name, you would say cis dash. So if we wrote it in one whole line, that would be cis dash six dash methyl dash three dash octene. Or you can say cis dash six dash methyl oct three ene. Either way is correct for IUPAC rules. Okay. So that's basically it for this video. We were just looking at the basics, right, to naming cis and trans um, stereoisomer compounds. In the next video, and in the future videos too, we'll be practicing naming E and Z compounds, which is similar to cis and trans, except E and so we'll be looking at E and Z stereoisomers. And we'll go over all this in our future videos, but basically, if we looked at the last example, right, so what was our last example? It was something like this, so right here, right here, and then we drew something like this, anything that we can draw, right? So here, we said this was cis because there's only two branches or two basically continuations off the double bond we have to worry about right here and right here. But what if I drew this, like another branch, right? So now we have to worry about not only these two, but also this. Okay, and then I can even make it more. And what if I drew a methyl here? Now you can't say cis or trans because there's not only two things to worry about. Now you have to say whether it's E or Z, and now there's specific rules that we have to follow in order to get to our E or Z answer. All right, and that's what we're going to be doing in our future videos. So I hope to see you guys there.